Okay, this is a quick video for what's uh, happening when somebody's doing a coin join using Sparrow Wallet. Sparrow Wallet is using uh, Whirlpool, uh, and I'm not technically um, great at explaining what's happening with this stuff, so I've invited uh, Diverter No KYC on. Welcome, Diverter. And also joining us is everybody's favorite autistic Labrador, Labrahada. <laughs> All right, uh, so I've got a UTXO um, here ready to um, go into Whirlpool. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just describe. So this is Sparrow Wallet. There's uh, one of the great things about Sparrow Wallet as a desktop software wallet is that it's got a really excellent uh, user interface. You see these tabs here. Uh, obviously, you want coin control when you're using uh, any kind of wallet. So Sparrow Wallet offers that here in this UTXO tab. Um, I'm going to click on this UTXO here, which is the only one that's in the this test wallet. And I'm going to hit Mix Selected. And then the first time you're using CoinJoin with uh, Whirlpool, it's going to give you this little introduction to what's happening in the background. Uh, so I'm going to hit Next here. After you, it's showing you that after you create, after you do your first Whirlpool uh, transaction, it's going to create these other tabs on the side here of of your software wallet. Okay, so real quick, go back to that real quick. Can we just sure because I know this this could kind of maybe be scary for some people. Um, this is essentially what's happening, and and you know the the coins run purists and stuff that you can you talk to me later. This is a very simple e explanation of this. All right, so essentially what's happening here is you're going to be creating a seg segregated account um, where your uh, your premix or unmixed UTXOs like you have in there right now are going to be completely segregated from the UTXOs that are going to come out at the end after Whirlpool. So your post-mix UTXOs. That's very, very important because if you don't segregate these two accounts, what can very easily happen when you're spending from the post-mix, if you're not careful, your wallet may select an unmixed input and it will put it together with a post-mix input. And when that happens, you've essentially tied together an unmixed UTXO with a mixed UTXO and kind of doxed your kind of doxed yourself a little bit there. So this can can maybe seem a little confusing or a little scary to people, but all that's happening, this is your exact same wallet. It's basically just creating a separate account in there for you. Right. So it's using the same seed phrase for these other wallets. Uh, it's only changing a derivation path. And that's something that's right. that is easy yeah, to just, rebuild just, later because so like if you were to lose your or if something were to happen to your say you had a samurai wallet and you lost your phone, you could easily rebuild it using the seed phrase and samurai wallet or um, sparrow are both going to use the same sort of um, way to find those derivation paths. Is that accurate? Sure. Sure. As long, yeah, and you, you can use something like an Electrum as long as you've got the derivation pass and all that. But as you said, the main thing, the main important thing is, is this is not like creating a new wallet. It's just like think of it as like entering a new room in a home. Like you're still in the same home. You've just got two different rooms now. So that's all this is. Yep. Okay. I'm going to hit next here. Uh, this, so what is, so code, so this is just like a, a samurai term, right? It's code. Is that is that a s yeah yeah th this, this is, is a like samurai a thing. You may see every now and then on Twitter, um, samurai wallet will tweet come out and tweet out a uh, sort of like a promotional code. And uh, if you enter this promotional code in this area right here and hit next, then you will receive um, a certain discount depending on what what they put on, um, and all of your um, your fees to to samurai or to sparrow. Um, will be discounted by a certain amount. Yeah. So the the this the most recent one I saw was uh, Thanksgiving. They did one. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thanksgiving, they, Christmas, couple couple of different places they've done one. Yeah. They're 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 awesome when you can find them because you'll get like twenty thirty percent. Sometimes I mean they've even done fifty percent off. Yeah, I was able to catch that Thanksgiving one. Uh, here you can set your uh, premix priority. Obviously the. Mempool is completely empty right now, so there's no reason to mess with this one. Uh, it, 
then I'm gonna I'm gonna hit now. I'm just gonna leave it on normal and hit next. Uh, here it's it's gonna take the amount that you have in the uh, of the amount of uh, sats that you've got in this UTXO. In this case, the UTXO I have selected is one million one hundred thousand sats, uh, and it's gonna find right. the appropriate the the pools that could be mixed that that it could get mixed in. In this case. Uh, you can you can either do a hundred thousand sats or a million sats. I find that the million sat um, pool is usually um, really it, it mixes faster. I'm not, I don't know why. Uh, maybe, do you have any? Um, uh, uh, well, yeah. you've got you've got the hundred thousand, um, the one million, um, and, and then you've also got some larger pools above that. Uh, the the one million and the one hundred thousand sat pool are both generally speaking um it's very fast your initial mix it will be virtually instant upon um upon confirmation there's there's plenty of liquidity to go around the main thing to think about when you're going to your pool selection is how many utxos you are then going to have to manage in your post mix and what your expected um actions are going to be with this and so just real quick example you've got this 1.1 million sat utxo here so you can either send it in the 1 million sat pool in which case as you can see there it tells you you're going to have a pre-mix output of one utxo if you select there on the 100,000 sat from the drop down if you pull it down right there it should change and now you'll see your pre-mix output is going to be 10 utxos okay so at the end there you're going to have 10 separate uh, 100,000 sat UTXOs. Now, um, if you're planning to say, you know, do a little bit of spending, um, then it's probably better to have a, a few more UTXOs. And that comes into play later on when we talk about the post mix spending tools that you have available to you after the mix. Um, if your plan is to just send these, send this stuff to storage, then it's probably not that big a deal. Maybe you want to go ahead and go with the larger pool because it's you're you're just going to basically leave it sitting in your cold storage for a while. So it's really up to you what you have planned here uh, going on. But either way, um, the fees on both are very manageable. The one hundred thousand sat fee, as you can see there, is five thousand sats. Um, if you go to the one million sat, is you'll see it's fifty thousand sats. So both of those are are quite manageable. Um, the important thing to remember as well. Um, I don't want to get too long here, but your pool fee to mix is a one-time fee, regardless of how much you enter. All right, so we're only entering 1.1 million sats here. It's going to charge you 50,000 sats to do that. However, if you were going to be entering 10 million sats, it would still only charge you that 50,000 sat pool fee. It's a flat rate fee, regardless of your amount entered. That's, that's, this is one of the hardest things for people usually to understand about the fee rate in Whirlpool. That is a flat rate regardless, um, and it's one time. So, yeah, it is. Stuff to think um, about. The other piece, I guess, this is probably the, in, in my estimation, um, I, there's always all kinds of um, FUD against um, coin joining that you hear. This, the fee is probably just the one that would get people who can get past all that other FUD to sort of second guess whether or not they want to do this. And this is just, you're just paying a privacy fee. Basically that's what that 50,000 sats is. It, it is. And, and the thing to remember though, is that after you pay that, you are, are going to be able with the Whirlpool protocol, you're going to be able to remix. So you'll be able to participate in as many mixes as you like, literally infinite, infinite mixes, as long as you want to completely for free. So you'll pay this fee one time, 50,000 sats, and this single UTXO here, you're going to be paying this 50,000 sats for one mix, but then it's up to you. You can leave this thing mixing for a year if you want to for free, and you can end up having, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60 mixes, however many you want. So it's a one-time thing. Right. Great. Okay, so I'm going to hit the preview mix here. This is going to show what this transaction is doing. So it's showing... Um, the the UTXO going into these different uh, paying into these different places. One is the Whirlpool fee, and I can hover in my mouse over Sparrow Wallet's uh, UI here, and you can see that it's fifty thousand sats going to the Whirlpool fee. I hover my mouse over the Bad Bank change, which is another tab over there. It's that's gonna 
uh, receive 47,000 sats. Uh, I can hover over the premix, which is one of the little wallet tabs here. Um, I'm not sure how to explain exactly what the premix wallet is. The way I think of it is it's just, um, it's just prepping the UTXO for uh, the postmix tab. Is that a good explanation of that? Yeah. So what we're looking at here, first of all, shout out to Craig Raw. Um, this this wallet that he's built and the way that he has made this so easy to see all the different parts and what's going on under the hood. It's amazing. Um, so big shout out to him, first of all. This what you're looking at right here is the TX zero process. This is called a TX zero. So if you hear ever hear that phrase, this is what we're talking about. And as you said, we're dealing with we're going to be sending this UTXO to premix. So what the TX zero is doing is it is this is your protection. All right. If you guys can picture the meme of the, the you know, the sleeping person and then you got the soldier standing there over top of them while they sleep and they're getting hit by all the arrows and the yeah. knives and stuff. The, the, the TX zero is the soldier here. All right. And you're being protected from many different things when we're talking about. Of coin join and anonymity, like things like civil protection. Um, it's going to be making sure that you're not ever going to be mixing with yourself. Um, this process is going to be making sure that nobody can come in later and just try to send um, an equal amount. Like say somebody tries to just send 0 0.01 Bitcoin to a post mix address and have it just start spinning from there and start mixing. You can't do that because this TX0 um, process is necessary in order for the Whirlpool coordinator to recognize this as a valid transaction, a valid UTXO to be mixed. So, I mean, I could go on all day about what this TX0 is. is it may be the single most misunderstood thing about CoinJoin is how powerful this process right here is and how important it is. Um, but yes, this is just preparation. So all we're doing now is stripping away all the things. We're stripping the Whirlpool fee that's going to uh, Samurai Wallet and Sparrow Wallet, that's being stripped away. Your bad bank change is going to be the amount over uh, what is necessary to pay your minor fee. So your bad bank change is, this is what you may also hear referred to as doxic change. That's what this is. Um, you don't want this to be able to be spent with your mixed coins because, as I talked about earlier, that kind of doxes your UTXOs using the common input ownership heuristic. So we want to get that out of there. We, we don't want anything in a mixed transaction other than mixed UTXOs. That's it. No fees, no change, no nothing. So that's what this TX0 is doing. It's stripping everything else away and just sending your single uh, post-mix UTXO to the pre-mix section of the wallet, um, basically waiting on other members to join the mix. Great. Thank you for that. Okay. I'm going to hit... Um... Well, you can see that it's Sparrow Wallet's already added these other tabs here, so I could click. I'll click through them after I hit this uh, broadcast premix transaction. If I had set this wallet up with the password, then Sparrow Wallet would have asked me to input that password before. It would have, actually, I don't know if it does that for coin joints. I might be wrong on that. Most uh, most other times when you're doing it, when you're spending using Sparrow Wallet, it'll ask you for your password. Okay, so at this point, we're, we, if, uh, if we want to see uh, anything else in this, we would have to wait for the transaction to get confirmed. Right. I don't know that I'm going right. to let this video um, go that long, but uh, I do want to uh, show... I... Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I don't know when the last block confirmed, but we may get lucky here. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, you're in the, you're in the pre-mix tab here. Um, so uh, you know, again, the way that he set all this stuff up is just, I mean, tremendous work. If you'll click on this little arrow over here by the unconfirmed in that UTXO, the little drop down arrow, um, you can see it'll give you some more information on your uh, the transaction that you just did. Um, you can click through uh, your tabs on the left as well, uh, you know, and see uh, transactions. You can see what was being sent, um, the different UTXOs if you have more than one in there. But yeah, at this it's point, a little interesting with the with when you're in these other tabs with a premix postmix. I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it does let you see addresses in that one. I think the yeah. postmix one is where it yeah, no, it is sort of obfuscating yes. addresses. Exactly. And see, this is this is what I was talking about earlier. It's important, as you can see, you can very easily calculate a a postmix um, address. 
So an attacker, what they would love to be able to do is just take any old UTXO that they know the transaction history of. They would like to send that an equal amount to try to trick the coordinator into thinking this is a mixable UTXO. Mm. And the reason they would do this, would this is what would be, would be called a civil attack. You want to try to get as many of your UTXOs in the mix as possible. So that way you can, by process of elimination, try to dox the other UTXOs. But because of the TX0 process and uh, the protection that Whirlpool affords you, that's, that's just an impossibility. It would be rejected by the coordinator. Um, any sort of address reuse, if that that's is That's what the premix all, is doing, right? That, this is what, it, right. this is what it's, it's doing to signal that it's an okay UTXO to, to mix. That, that's exactly right. And so now all it's doing um, as, a, as a participant, there are five participants in any Whirlpool mix. Um, uh, a minimum of two sometimes three of those UTXOs must come from the premix portion of your wallet. Okay, the, the remaining two to three UTXOs that are going to be present in this mix, those are what we call free riders, or uh, the, these are people that are already mixed. And as I talked about earlier, you can remix as many times as you want for free. So they, th that's what those other UTXOs are. Those are people that are just leaving their UTXOs mixing excuse me, as long as they would like to for free. And they're also providing liquidity to the new mixes. So that's important because, again, it's, it's a, a, it protects you from some sort of attackers trying to come in because what an attacker would like to do is they would like to come in and be four out of the five UTXOs in a mix. That way they know this other UTXO is the only one that's not theirs. They can then track it by elimination. But because... Uh, the remixers are chosen at random by the Whirlpool coordinator, it's virtually impossible. You would have to be like the attacker would have to be virtually every other UTXO in the entire Whirlpool liquidity pool yeah. in order to make any sort of civil attack, you know, feasible. And we've long since passed that point. The liquidity is, is alive and well in, in Whirlpool. So it, there are, are a lot of protections that are happening that people don't really think about or understand that it is a form of protection. Um, and the good thing about this stuff is you don't really have to understand all that. It, you're able to if you want to. And this wallet obviously provides you with all the tools to be able to dig through and see exactly what's happening. But at the end of the day, if you just want some privacy and just want to mix, you can also just come in here and, and click a couple of tabs and boom, you're mixed. And you don't really have to understand exactly how it's working, but it's here for you if you want to. Yeah, I, honestly, this is um, part of why I, I really enjoyed um, the Sparrow Wallet experiences because, uh, and for obvious reasons, you, can't, you don't really want to have all of this extra uh, stuff to click through when you're using it on a, on a mobile device. You just want to be able to spend when you need to spend. Um, but for me, it was really cool to see all this um, stuff happening. It kind of gives you a, a preview of what's happening in the background on Samurai yeah. Wallet. Uh, even so, f even for example, being able to go in and see the the derivation paths that were created. And, and mm -hmm. one of the one of the wallets that I have, I, I used with um, Samurai first. And when I when I popped the information into Sparrow Wallet, it sort of rebuilt all of that. And that's how I kind of knew yeah. that it's it's this like uh, code that it, that any wallet could use because they've they're just figuring out these different derivation paths the same exact way every time. So you don't have, so you know, it it, it sort of opened up um, the windows for me on on what's happening in the background on, on Samurai. Sure. If you want to click that bad bank tab over there, that's one thing we didn't really talk about too much. But this is going to show you that forty seven thousand. Uh, 113 sets that was peeled off um, that is not going to be able to be selected from your post mix. Um, and it's again, it's very important that these things are all segregated. Um, and that's just because uh, from a user perspective, um, it's, it's, it's great to know all these things and to know exactly what's happening and to know which UTXOs you should select and which UTXOs you shouldn't select. But Having said that, we shouldn't expect everyone to go through this whole entire process of learning all this stuff because right. if that's required, it's just not going to happen. You don't so want to do that when you're when you're spending from Postmix on your Samurai wallet and you're out and about. You don't want to have to worry about 
accidentally um, spending from your uh, docs yeah. exchange, as, as you described that, it. That, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. And you don't want the users to have to understand this entire process. You just They just want a little bit of privacy. So it is incumbent upon the developers to then try to help the users prevent from foot gunning themselves, as we should say, from suiting themselves in the foot. You want to prevent that as much as possible, but you want to do that in a way such that you're not actually hindering them from doing what they want with their money. Because at the end of the day, it's your money to do with as you please. That's why we're all in Bitcoin to begin with, right? <laughs> so nobody right. can tell us what we can do with our money. So um, the way that they've done this then is they've done it in such a way so that they don't have to tell you no. They just kind of remove it from the equation so that you know you can still spend it. You can still do whatever you want to with this, but they're just going to try their best to keep you from accidentally doing something that's going to harm your privacy. Right. I definitely prefer not having to think about that when I'm if I'm going to do a spend an amount about with the samurai in my pocket. But um, but I do geek out on this kind yeah. of stuff. Being able to yeah. see it and ha and have all of this uh, laid out in a really clean way, I think was. Um, it was very helpful for me to understand what's happening. Okay. I don't think that that transaction has been confirmed yet. So I think what I'm going to do well, here, oh, go ahead, Labra. Yeah. Sorry, Pedro. Yeah. I do have a question about the uh, bad bank. So you said that we can use that. At, I mean, that we can spend those coins. Uh, mm -hmm. Can I uh, whirlpool those coins again? How would that work? Would that be the same way right. or is it different? Right. So, um, there's a procedure, it's kind of colloquially known, we kind of call it uh, cascading. And what we're talking about when we talk about cascading is, as we mentioned earlier, there are several different pool size selections uh, for a whirlpool. So just as an example, let's, uh, let's say you have a UTXO that is uh, 1.8 million sats, okay? When you, if you enter that UTXO by itself into the 1 million sat pool, you're still going to have about 700,000 uh, sats left over. So ideally, what you would do then is th that UTXO that's remaining, that 700,000 sats, you would then take that UTXO again by itself and mix it then in the lower pool, in the 100,000 sat pool. So you get this kind of cascading effect. Or you mix the UTXO, then you mix the change by itself. And you mix the change of that by itself. All the way down until you get down to where you have an extremely small amount um, of sets that, that are not mixed. So that's the idea is to kind of keep you from having too much unmixed. So yes, you can. Um, one, one warning I would put out is... Uh, again, say, for example, you've done four different mixes, and now you have four different 47,000 UTXOs left in this bad bank. So you've got four sitting there. Should you combine those together to get uh, an amount enough big enough to mix and then go that way? The easy answer to this, uh, basically the most general one, is if they're all from the same source, then that's fine. And what I mean by that is, um, if they're all bought from Coinbase, I hope to God they're not, but let's just say they are, okay, or Cash App. Let's use Cash App. That's not as bad. They're all bought from Cash App, okay? That's the same source, the same KYC, uh, your same identification is all tied to that same UTXO. So you're not, you're not doxing any more information about yourself than they already have. However, if two of those UTXOs are from Cash App and two of those UTXOs are from BISC, now, it's very important that you don't mix those two together because you would be revealing more information about your holdings. So situations like that is where uh, the labeling uh, in Sparrow Wallet and in Samurai becomes very important because you can label each UTXO um, and it will then keep track of what is what. So if you just want to put, you know, hey, this is Cash App KYC or hey, this is BISC or Stripe, yeah, anything. And then you could kind of keep better track of which ones you can combine together and which ones you can't. Got Great. it. That was a good explanation. I actually had, actually had that as a part to talk about in the bad bank. Um, so I appreciate you clearing that up. I would not have done as good of a job. Thanks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We're doing our part there. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it's going to be important, I think, for 
for you to be able to show people the the post mix uh, spending tools because that I mean Whirlpool itself sets Samurai and and uh, Sparrow apart from quote unquote the competition um, because it's such a great and robust protocol. But the real deal, the stuff that's really important is the post mix um, spending part because nobody else offers these post mix spending tools that enable you to then spend after mixing without messing everything up. And that's what so many people do. You know, so many people will use something like a wasabi. And then when you're done mixing with it, like there's no, there's nothing left there. Now Um, you can't, there's no tools for you to use. So when you go to mix, or I'm sorry, when you go to spend your post mix UTXOs, all it's going to do is merge all those inputs together percent deterministic link transaction and send it to an to an output so the 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 uh with sparrow and samurai using things like stonewall and stonewall x2 and like you just pulled up the you know sore band uh and the pain ems in order to add some deniability to the following transaction after mixing at such a huge deal that it just it really doesn't get the the credit that it deserves <clears throat> yeah, totally agree. Um, I'm not sure if with one UTXO, I'm not even sure that it will that it will let you because you have to have more than one. But we can give it a shot here. But yeah, yeah. that that's it's awesome not going to show there. unless it's not going to show unless the transactions in postmix, right? Yeah, yeah, it'll only be in post. Well, I don't know. Go go into premix and then go into send, and let's see if it'll if it'll let you there. Go into the send tab over there on the on your left. There you go. There we go. So it's got efficiency and privacy down there at the bottom. Can you click between them? Probably might not let you with a single UTXO. Okay, so it's already doing it. Um, so that's where it'll it, you know it'll show you there your what your stone wall would look like. I just don't know for sure if it's going to let us do it with a single UTXO. Yeah, I see. You know what I mean? But if you're spending one, it can't because Stonewall requires that. Um, Either you have, let's see, I wonder if I could, eh. Stonewall requires that you you have to have at least double the amount that you're trying to spend, and you, you want to have at least two UTXOs. That way, um, you know, it pulls multiple UTXOs to use as inputs. So it, 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 the idea is to trick chain analysis into uh, not really knowing whether or not this is one single person or two people combining inputs for this transaction. So that's, you know, it, it, you, you don't have that option anywhere else. And it really, really helps because you'll see if you go on like a zero XT or something where it gives you the percentage or even a block chair, or I think even, even block string does it. Um, they give you that kind of like the percentage chance that, you know, this output belongs to this input. Um, if you use a Stonewall or Stonewall X2 after a mix transaction, then you'll see like the mix, your inputs and outputs have like a 30% chance of being tied together. Mm -hmm. And then the spend following that has only like, you know, uh, one, one UTXO will have like a 20% chance. One UTXO will have a 60% chance. It's just, it makes them have to piece all this stuff together. And at any point during that whole, uh, period where they're trying to figure out what's going on if at any point they get one single thing wrong then they're completely following the wrong trail they right. think they've got their man you know so right okay a little time has passed uh we've got that million sat utexo sitting in uh the post mix account here it's gone through 13 mixes so far i added some more uh 100,000 sat utexos uh, in order to do a follow-up video showing uh, post-mix spend and some of the post-mix tools that Sparrow Wallet has added that are already in Samurai Wallet. I'm going to have some show notes below in case somebody wants to dig in further on the technical aspects of a coin join and uh, a, a deeper explanation of what TX0 is. And there's going to be a, a link to Ben Sessions much longer video on uh, setting up Sparrow Wallet. Thank you, Diverter, and thank you, Labrador for joining. This was a quick video 
uh, for an example of how to do a coin join using Sparrow Wallet. Thanks. <laughs>